Welcome back, everybody. As you may or may not know, 7.34c just came out, giving us a little bit of balance changes. And today we're just going to be discussing, basically updating you guys on the tiers of the heroes in the current patch, as well as the effects that this C patch is going to have, most likely leading into being the final patch before TI. Let's go ahead and get started. So, 7.34c, some small non-hero changes, and this is it. A little nerf to Solar Crest, and a little nerf to a few of the tier 1 neutral items and Vambrace. I'd say all of these neutral items are still at the same tiers that they were previously, um, Vambrace being the only one that I think got hit pretty hard. So the thing I'll say about Vambrace now is it's kind of like the hand-me-down, I wanted a Grove Bow or a Specialist Array as a ranged hero, so I'll take this Vambrace. Like, I feel like there's usually going to be a better item in the tier that your hero would want, but it might not be one of your options, and that's when you would take Vambrace. So, getting into hero changes, uh, we're just going to skim through it really quickly. So, some buffs to Abaddon support. I think overall, Abaddon will still be pretty weak. We have another sizable buff to Arc Warden. I actually think Arc Warden mid, especially from, like, tops and perhaps Bat Chest, will be seeing play. It's now saying that the Tempest Double now always spawns with full health, full mana, and in the previous patch, they made it so you can cast it from 700 range, so you can basically get level 6 and plant this full HP, full mana double in front of the opponent, even if they're, like, away from you. Um, at the very least, it's significant harass, and I played against it once recently, and I got killed because of that recent buff. So now with this one in tandem, I think we might be seeing some mid Arc Warden with some active builds. Small buffs to Axe. I think he's actually rising in prominence as an offlaner, potentially, especially in the lower MMR brackets, where people tend to be out of position and feed to the Blade Mill Call. I think Bane is going to be one of the best five position supports now. Um, lane dominating wise, he was already strong and some people were even considering maxing and feeble as it does damage now and it kind of just completely gimps the hero you're using it on. So now that maxing it out isn't punished by mana cost, we might see some cool and uh, like enfeeble maxing kind of builds on Bane. So since they nerfed Tree, which we'll see lower, and he was kind of like one of the best lane babysitting supports, I think Bane is definitely, the stocks are rising. Beastmaster is no longer like the be-all end-all counter to Phantom Lancer and other illusion heroes. So that's a big nerf to him in terms of certain matchups. We might be seeing Bounty Hunter come back but I don't necessarily know if he fits this meta well enough. But in pubs, he's always good because of track picking people off. Brewmaster was certainly a broken hero. Um, you know, Monkeys Forever rejoicing. And I think this is the first time I've seen this hero nerfed in quite some time. Uh, but he definitely needed it as Cinder Brew. Just felt like with Speared Vessel and Urn, it, the guaranteed proc on it and such a low cooldown. And it also buffs him at the same time. It's just a little bit too much. Will we see more Bristleback with a base damage increase by three? Where is Bristleback's base damage now? Is now 58. That's pretty high. Like in the past, you pretty much single-handedly relied on Quill spam to get CS at lower levels. So maybe with the mana regen buffs, like base mana regen buffs, plus the base damage buffs, Bristleback might be a much more potent laner. Um, I'm curious to try some builds on him. He's got some really decent base stats now. I, I almost think like he might be best carry with these builds because now you have to go less mana items to start. But as an offlaner, I feel like he still largely gets ignored. And I don't know how I feel about like the ags, like Bloodstone Cheese. But I I'm definitely going to be look keeping an eye out on Bristol because he is one of my favorite heroes to play. Let's just act like Broodmother didn't get touched. Centaur Warrunner, I'm pretty huge on this one. I was already enjoying him. You saw him in the previous video I made like a week or two ago. 10 movement speed, even more so don't need the blink. Stampede cooldown, lower, even more so don't need the blink. And now the cooldown on his Ags, if he ever wants to buy it, which gives him the Stampede buff, is now also sizably lower. So, Blade Mill Heart Centaur... If you weren't already trying it, maybe Ice Frog's really getting on the train, baby. Or the wagon, or the workhorse. Clinks. I just don't really know what his role is right now. He feels a bit too weak in lane as support, and as mid, I feel like he loses most matchups. Crystal Maiden, literally unkillable. Could be making a make it making a comeback as a support i think her biggest issue right now is like her laning stage and the ability to just actually win them compared to a five like tree warlock bane so these are very relevant buffs for crystal maiden ah uh, the classic dark seer vacuum nerf Dawnbreaker, we were talking about her being one of the most broken heroes in dota got the reverse treatment of centaur right 10 movement speed taken away two base strength uh i think she will still be very good but 
this definitely hurts on a hero that gets kited, that has to chase people. Uh, the phase boot timing will be even less potent. Like, these little things, like 10 movement speed on a chase hero like Dawn, definitely add up. She might even fall out of first pick phase with these type of nerfs. Um, they also fixed the soul ring bug, which was making it so that unused mana was staying. It actually allowed you to go much mana intensive builds on Dawn with only going soul ring. So she got hit pretty hard by that as well. Dazzle? I mean, core Dazzle, man. They made it so his ulti cost less at higher levels, higher intelligence gain, better attack speed talent, tops and dazzle mid once again. I mean, I kind of want to try it myself, to be honest. I think I will. Doom nerfed again. I mean, the new Doom felt like a huge nerf when it originally came out that it no longer mutes and now it prevents healing. But against heroes like Gyro and Sven, who are in the meta that stand their ground with Satanic, Doom was proving to be pretty broken. Earth Spirit with a nerf. Pretty much any strength hero that got up in your face and blade mailed is really strong right now. Earth Spirit was one of those. A hero that didn't blade mail but got up in your face was Earth Shaker. Uh, Enchant Totem in lane is just too obnoxious, really. They gave it so many buffs over time. Core Shaker was just so powerful, so I think this is a very relevant nerf. I think he'll still see play, but like this, plus the base damage decrease on the talent, which is like effectively 4x on Enchant Totem, right? It's like 40 less damage. Uh, these are all things that uh, will make this less powerful, but still see play. I think it was that broken. Ember Spirit might... Finally struggle in the lanes. Sleight of Fist being his main source of harass. You know, five for the cost of six. Pretty decent nerf there on a hero that does have like a limited mana pool. And also like he does struggle getting his bottle early sometimes. So this health regen will matter. Gyrocopter, the most broken hero of the entire 7.34B. Agility gain nerf, stun duration on rocket, but most notably flak cannon nerf down to 20 seconds. Level one, you can't really spam it in lane. It's 26 instead of 18. And then at max level, it's still two seconds uh, more than it was previously. Honestly, I think the level 15 change is kind of a buff to Gyrocopter because when I was farming with Ags, my double proc on the side gunner was clearing things so fast that I didn't even use my nine attacks at this stage of the game. So I almost feel like the 25 damage would be better um, if you reverse the two talents. So I think in theory, this is supposed to be a nerf. I mean, at the end of the day, you do have 15 less damage once you hit level 20. But overall, I, I think Gyro is still going to be very strong. But his level 25 instead of a 12 second cooldown flat cannon previously, it's now 15. So they're definitely hitting him where they're supposed to be hitting him. We talked about the broken aspect of flat cannon, but I think Gyrocopter will still be first pickable in one of the strongest carries in the game. Maybe instead of a 54% win rate, he has like a 52 and a half. Uh, negligible in my opinion. Thank God for some invoker nerfs. Just really addressing his ability to move around the map. Sustain from health regen, movement speed from Wex, and then his shard. I didn't even know it did this, that it if you became immune during the deep EMP that you'd still get pulled. This, this shard was way too powerful. It felt like a black hole that burned your mana. It didn't stun you, but it burned your mana, and that's like on a super low cooldown. Jakiro. I will be trying him. Same idea as Bane, you know? Just giving his lane prominence uh, a buff with having dual breath and liquid fire Fire doing more damage um, and being lower mana cost. So um, his like level one, two, and three timing is just going to be that much better. Uh, I always love my boy Jakiro, so I will be trying him out as well. Speaking of which, we can make some changes just to address like what's currently happening and kind of see how you like let you guys see like how I view patches, right? So like I see Jakiro and Bane. I'm like, I actually like playing Bane even though my level's not very high. So I'm like, I'm gonna move these heroes in because I really want to try them. And it's something I encourage you guys to do at like the start of a new patch, right? Even if it's a small patch, little tweaks where you're like, oh, my hero pool. So, you know, Centaur got buffed. I want to try him a bit more. Dawnbreaker maybe a bit lower on the stock. Um, and then, you know, we can go back to the patch and keep going, making sure we don't miss anything along the way. We got Legion Commander. Uh, just some talent nerfs, not a big deal. Slight nerf to Lion on the Hex cast range, but I think he's pretty much the same hero. Lone Druid getting it some decent buffs, but mainly they fixed a lot of bugs with the way his Spear Bear worked as like an actual hero. It's not meant to be a literal hero in regards to like Slark Essence Shift and Axe Culling Blade and stuff like this. So I think Lone Druid got pretty relevant buffs here. I absolutely hate this hero in terms of playing him, so I'm not going to be playing him, but I do think he'll be pretty strong if played correctly. Magnus, I think is pretty much the same hero. Maybe, I mean, obviously a bit better, but you know, maybe this will help Mag Mid. 50 extra attack range, but overall, uh, I'd, I'd lean towards Mag still being relatively out of the meta. Meepo no longer has these like unplayable matchups. If you like Shadow Demon disrupted 
or OD imprisoned, he would just lose Mega Meepo instantly. So I like that they're addressing like Beastmaster, Illusion Interaction, Meepo with this. You just don't want certain matchups in the game based on like a minor mechanic to just be unplayable. That's just really bad for the balancing of Dota. So I think these are good changes. Deadshot, getting a pretty sizable buff level one from Muerta, giving her a lot better way to CS. Honestly, like this is kind of like saying her level, her laning stage is now more powerful or her ability to secure CS level one. You have to think that most heroes hit for about six 60 damage. So the window for CSing, if you go from like the difference between 75 to 60 and 100 to 60 is much larger now. So, you know, I'll add more to, to my hero list. Like the fact that they buffed her ulti level one, as well as her level one ability to CS, that's exactly what a carry needs, you know, to be potentially more viable. So I'll put her up here just like kind of have her on my radar. I don't know exactly how much I'll play her, but this is convincing me that it's enough to like try. Naga with a slight nerf. I'd say she's pretty much the same hero. Maybe she's like A tier now instead of S tier. Nature's Prophet. We just got done with the counters video talking about how broken this hero is. Sprout was definitely unintuitive. It like did damage to you slightly outside of the trees. So now it at least tells you where that area is. And he also lost one armor, six attack speed, level one. Now you can use Tangos to counter Sprout in lane. So maybe as support, you don't like have to buy a Quelling in lane. You may have to buy it later, but maybe you're first 600 gold you don't which is nice i feel like nature's profit literally sucking 100 gold from everybody on the enemy team was one of those broken aspects of the hero to be honest necrophos also literally unkillable i think he's still a situational last pick in the off lane or mid but in games where they don't have burst and necro can go like this sanj and kaya heart ags build i think he's really strong but I do feel like a lot of the meta right now, you need do shit heroes. And he kind of like watches the enemy core that he's laning against go kill people, I feel like. So also like with safe laners like PA and supports like Grimstroke, CM and like Bane, like these heroes that just kind of kill the one guy, Necro tends to struggle. But if they're missing these heroes, you know, Necro, I think is going to be a very powerful last pick. Nyx Assassin. I have been having huge success with Nyx Assassin in the recent past. Uh, this current patch, I am five, four and one on Nyx. And I honestly felt like, uh, you know, I want to give a quick talk about Nyx because Mind Flare is an underrated ability. It does bonus damage based on how much damage you've done to them in the last 15 seconds. So in the late game, I think a lot of people think of Nyx as this Dagon building, Vendetta, Dagon, Mind Flare one-shotting. But I've had a lot of success in the mid to late game since Spike Carapace is such a low cooldown of Spike Carapace, like to defend myself and then like Mind Flare, Force Staff, Mind Flare with like, you have like Aether Lens, Force Staff, and I'm just spamming Mind Flare on enemy cores and every success successive Mind Flare is just doing more damage. So now that they're like, they're buffing his early game with Vendetta, but I feel like as the later stage of the game go on, I feel like a lot of Nyx Assassins kind of lose their place in the game. So I'd really encourage you guys to think that like, ideally you play for that Vendetta hit, but that's usually in the mid game. But in the late game, when the team fights are happening you're a pretty insanely high impact support if you're just mind flaring people and having an ether lens stun and then very difficult to bring down with this super low cooldown high uptime spike carapace right so really keep an eye out for nyx assassin um i actually plan to be making a guide on him because he's one of my favorite supports and i think his laning stage is a bit awkward as a support but man I i'm really excited about these changes i just love playing nyx i hate playing against it though because i die in one hit as the carry i just want to farm creeps ogre magi base health regen i don't really know his place i don't know if he's an off laner i don't know if he's a five i feel like he's just kind of lost in the meta right now omni knight cooldown we talked about this being a problem for Repel. 30 seconds is not all that bad. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like a BKB that's silenceable is just not that strong, right? Like you can prevent him from using it by silencing him. But will we see the core Omni Knight? That's the question. Looks like they're making Hammer of Purity much stronger level one in the sense that 30 mana compared to 40 is like basically nothing. Um, and then it's a bit worse at level four, but you know, we may be seeing some like off lane or mid Omni Knight with these type of changes. Maybe you're just a Giga Chad. Health regen, strength, debuff immunity. I'm curious. We'll see. Pangolier. Uh, I still think this hero is insanely strong. I thought the shield crash change to being a flat amount of shield rather than percentage was going to be a nerf, but I think the, just the defusal timing on Pango is so obnoxious right now, and I still think Pango is going to be like an A-tier mid-hero. I know I haven't given you guys very many tier lists on the mid lane, but I really do think Pangolier is high up there. Phoenix, his laning stage was definitely really powerful, so slight nerf to level one and two fire spirits. Primal Beast, we talked about these heroes that get up in your face with a blade mail. 
Slight nerfs, not a big deal. Same hero though. Pugna, you know, I, I maybe they're trying to make like core Pugna come back with these type of changes, really buffing his ultimate and like base end stats. So I'm not sure. I feel like Pugna is like a B, C tier hero at best, but maybe his laning stages is that much better now. Ricky, I feel like the last patch really gutted him or like came close to gutting him. And this is kind of like the final straw, just like, yeah, a slight buff on early levels of tricks, but like now you just, your ulti does even less than before. So I really do think Ricky's kind of just in the dumpster now. Um, I don't really know where he goes. Fade Bolt on Rubik, uh, level one laning stage, pretty huge nerf. I actually think this like is huge nerf, especially for competitive Dota. Just like a lot of Fade Bolts were used in early on in lane to just win trades. And now that just doesn't really work. You can still secure the range creep, but it's not helping you win trades. Like 5% is virtually nothing. Sand King, he had his week of prominence. He was just a god. And now, you know, he got nerfed back into the ground. Is this enough? It's worth trying him, maybe. 100 cast range on Burrow Strike is a lot at the max level. The Sandstorm movement speed talent's still far worse than the radius increase, but maybe, maybe. I've also been having huge success with Shadow Shaman. As you can see, these are the only two fours that I play this patch. Um, I think Shadow Shaman, you know, this patch, I'm 5-0 and with him. Highly underrated hero. I think that... You know, he's been a sleeper this entire patch. Same thing with Nyx. His laning stage is a bit awkward because his attack range is really low. But man, this hero's spells are just broken. Like Hex being 20% damage amp. If you guys did, if you guys missed that change in the previous patch, like look at all the buffs that Hex has received. Um, and now all of a sudden, Mass Serpent Wards is a lower cooldown at level 6. So like going from tier 1 tower to tier 1 tower is just that much faster. Tier 1 tower into Roche. Having a support like this just allows you to get objectives with a lot of lineups that have no cores to take it, which is just awesome. So uh, I love him as support. He's similar to Kiro in the sense that, you know, has some lockdown, has tower taking, wave clear, scales really well. So if you guys want to feel impactful, I think he's especially a four and really look out for Shadow Shaman in this patch. Skyrath Mage with a nerf to his attack speed. Sniper, I think is still going to be bad, but, uh, you know, we'll just have to see. I think ranged position based heroes right now are just tough to make work. And at least a lot of them do a lot of damage to compensate for the fact that they get jumped, but Sniper just doesn't. I feel like the map is too open. There's too many heroes that just, you know, blink echo slam you, roll on you like Earth Spirit, Primal Beast. Uh, you know, the list goes on. Fear Breaker with some small buffs, but I still think the hero just has a weird role in Dota right now. I think he's too weak as a core and his support, he's a bit greedy. And I'd rather be like the Nyx and Shaman. I feel like those supports actually scale insanely well in like the early to mid game in comparison to Spearbreaker. Like Spearbreaker is always going to be a late game menace when he gets items, but I feel like there's like this mid game timing where he's just kind of super useless. Spin, we talked about being an S tier carry. I think he's still the same hero. Slight nerfs all around, but none of this is game breaking. It's going to lower his win percentage by 1%, 0.5%, but really strong hero still. Really just reliable in this meta. Surprised they nerfed Terrorblade, speaking of meta, as I feel like his win rates in pubs were not high, but he did feel like one of the stronger illusion heroes right now. Now, really strong laner, uh, laned really well with heroes like Tree, like all the melee fives, because he's effectively like a ranged hero when he pushes Metamorph. But, you know, I, I don't think this changes when and if you'd pick Terrorblade, but you know, it's there. A lot of nerfs to Tree, especially the level one Leech Seed. Uh, that's what people were really taking and they were just spamming it on enemy heroes. Or if the enemy heroes were both ranged, I'd see them just spamming it on creeps. It's 125 heal slash damage. So it's just giving you and your ally a tango at the very least, which honestly in theory is pretty broken if this support also hits for 100 damage. So Treant's win rate was super high. It was like 56%. So making it this these type of nerfs was definitely necessary. And dying nerfed again, I feel like this hero's kind of just gone. He's already been fading away and like Tombstone Vision is actually a huge deal in mid to late game team fights. That's most of his impact. And so by nerfing this, just further reducing his impact in the late game. Vengeful Spear also a broken support of the patch, um, even sometimes played as core. Most notably, Wave of Terror is just not free anymore, you know, going from 25 to 40 mana. Similar nerf to Earthshaker, who's just spamming the spell in order to win lanes. Will she still see play? Yes. I also think she's a bit overrated, but some nice nerfs coming out here. Warlock, another broken support. You're seeing nerfs all around to him. I still think he'll be a very strong five. Very strong. Weaver, I think, is pretty much irrelevant in this meta. Windranger getting five total base stats, which is 3.5 damage on a on a universal hero. I don't think that's to be scoffed at, to be honest. I think Windranger being a right clicker, getting three and a half base damage. Uh, that is a lot. What is she sitting at now? She's sitting at 48 base damage and, you know, universal heroes can buy about 10 damage worth of stats. So 58 damage on a universal hero level one, not too shabby. Winter Wyvern with some huge laning stage buffs. 
Base armor by one, mana regen, cooldown on Arctic burn level one, insanely lower. So yeah, I actually think Wyvern as support is gonna make a comeback. I think this predominantly buffs support Wyvern, um, allowing her to kind of weave in and out of the lane, spamming her Q every single wave, because waves come every 30 seconds. So instead of 38 seconds, it's 26. Use your Q, go pull, use your Q, go pull. That's the way Wyvern always wants to play, and I think that this cooldown reduction is going to allow that playstyle to be much more potent. Uh, we got Witch Doctor with a slight buff to Paralyzing Cask, but also the damage nerf in the late game to the Death Ward. You know, he's a menace in your guys' pubs, but I think the reason they didn't hit him too hard is because he's not actually seeing play in the Immortal Bracket very much, so they're kind of trying to make sure they balance the game as best they can evenly between the lower MMRs and the higher MMRs, especially going into TI. And then Zeus. I really do enjoy the Manta Shard build because it allows him to really ramp up his late game and kind of just play off map all the time you still be a spellcaster but with the manta shard you don't get picked off and you basically can do your job of clearing up lanes better um i think this hero is severely underrated if anything like i was already seeing it some in my games giving him a lower cooldown on Thunder's God's Wrath early game and a lower mana cost, effectively giving you like an extra arc lightning if you're trying to finish somebody off. Uh, these are not negligible changes. So really looking forward to playing some Zeus. So last but not least, you know, we talked about all the heroes. When I look at my hero grid, I'm not going to be changing too much for now. This is like my, you know, I made a few changes that we saw with the supports because those are my off rolls. But like, you know, for mid, I, I don't actually play Centaur anymore. I do want to try some Nyx mid still. But these are kind of my mids. Like, you know, I'll refine my hero list in front of you guys just to show you guys what I'm kind of thinking. I usually want like one melee or two ranged and two melee kind of letting me, you know, account for most situations. So these, this is the heroes that I'm going to go with for now. Honestly, in the carry and offlane, my two main roles, I don't think too much has changed, but I think we're going to see these counters that didn't previously work against Gyro. You know, they weren't strong enough because Gyro's timings were too fast and now they're a bit slower. These things are going to have impact, but we're going to have to kind of see what that impact exactly is. So this is my hero list for now. If you guys haven't been able to catch me on Twitch, because I show this pretty much every single day, but I will be adjusting it in the upcoming videos when I feel like, you know, the meta has kind of settled out for the international. Hope you guys enjoyed 7.34C review. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.